Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. My name is Noelle McAvoy. And I'm Scott Ramp. How is everybody doing today? <laughs> that was Asaph Adonai on piano. Thank you, Asaph. My pleasure. Yeah, so happy Monday, everyone. Mm -hmm. I hope you all had a great weekend. Missoula was full of activities and yes, really active. Was. So, and it was nice. Mm -hmm. The weather was fairly nice, kind of weird. Did you catch that storm last night? Yeah, I was outside catching Pokemon during that storm. Oh, were you? Yeah, but you no, I was in my car. I was just oh, like, I drove good. to a uh, area which, uh, it was like incest and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I keep on calling it incest, but it's incense. Incense Pokemon. Yeah, because it attracts Pokemon, and it's oh, like they have these areas where you can go to. Anyways, yeah, uh, that's what I did. I was uh, <laughs> at a friend's barbecue, and then it started raining and thundering and lightning, and I was on my bike, but I needed to go home and go to sleep, to, you know, to wake up for our fabulous show. Yep. So I biked through the rain and that storm. And you can I expect that though. same thing happening today, perhaps. Um, <laughs> oh. You have a high of 87 with a low of 51 today. Of course, it is currently 52, so one above the uh, low that was. Um, um, supposed to be happening today, but I'm assuming it was that low this morning. But of course, a nice early, nice, cool, chill, warm morning. But of course, you can expect to get much, much hotter with a chance of having some intense, um, some lightning and thunder. I don't know. Who knows? It's about 20% chance. Uh, Tuesday, you can expect it to be sunny, mostly clear. And then Wednesday, a lot of the same with a slight chance of thunderstorms. And so it's going to be kind of like on and off. It's going to be um, it's going to be teasing us for a while. And this is the kind of weather that uh, should uh, um, put us put us into a fire. Yeah. Sure. Like yes. It's it's pretty close. Dry I, and I, hot. If there's not already a fire, I, I don't know about. You know, I haven't heard of any. I heard that the one that was where was it outside of Hamilton? Yeah, there that was one a... was contained. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's out completely, but it's contained. So that yeah. one's I guess safe. Um, but because of the rain that we've gotten, I heard that we'll be okay for another week or two, and our fire level is down to moderate. Yeah. But after we see this weather, who knows? Yeah, they. The, um, the I talked to the, one of the firefighters when I did the uh, Bonner um, Milltown Community Council, and they were saying that it did lower down a step, mm -hmm. but that should only last for about a week or two before yeah. they start raising it up once again. And especially with this uh, dry weather, but then they have these like flash thunder storms. Yeah. Yeah. It, so. It's ridiculous. But of course, if you want to find, find out more information, you can log on to uh, nationalweatherservice.org. Mm -hmm. And of course, if you want to find out more information about us, you can log on to wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. So nice, we made you write it out to us, and I'm too cheap to buy the license for <laughs> wakeupmissoula.com. So there it is. Uh, you can like us on Facebook. You can uh, follow us on Twitter. Wake up, uh, Missoula Community Access Television also has a Twitter at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us, just check us out at MCAT.org. But of course, uh, Wednesday, uh, the City Council had a meeting about the demolition of the old mercantile. So they're going to continue that meeting this Wednesday and it, it won't be on consent agenda for at least a little while, but it seems like um, now they're going to plan on trying to see as much as they can keep the old aesthetic of the mercantile. I think the, the word the word they like a lot is facade. Mm -hmm. I want to keep the facade alive. I want to the, keep facade. the facade. So that's keep a word that it, that's a word that's been thrown around a, mm -hmm. a lot, especially even like some of the people who don't want it to be demolished want to keep the old facade for sure. Yeah. Facade. Definitely. They want to keep it with the aesthetic of downtown, which I think is smart. Don't we don't want some random building out of place that like mm -hmm. looks really ugly and is huge. But of course, uh, we don't have too many new programs happening um, tonight, but we do have uh, one I do want to highlight for tomorrow, and it is called Word Song, Bringing Poetry to Life. We showed the pe a little piece of this a couple weeks ago, but it's on again on MCAT tomorrow at 9.30, and I just want to give you guys a little taste of that. Uh, and so uh, we're going to do another poem by perhaps, you know, the, uh, I guess perhaps our premier poet, uh, Walt Whitman. And uh, this sort of echoes that theme about children and, and perhaps poetry. And uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's called, There Was a Child Went Forth. There was a child went forth every day. And the first object he looked upon, that object she became. All right, so you can check this out tomorrow night at 9.30. And of course, following the themes of the spoken word is another clip, which uh, is called Eat Your Words, which happens right after about 10, 30, 10, 27, um, more um, precisely. But here's a little taste of um, Eat Your Words on MCAT tomorrow night. And so again, what's really interesting is from the intention or purpose of this poem. This is a very feminine poem. We're going to be touching on the, you know, femininity as object 
and the evolving female. 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 Yeah, this is very female. So what? first let's start with the facts. Alright, so of course you can get the facts tomorrow night at 10.30. <laughs> Who is that heckler in the crowd? Uh, they're having a, a table discussion. Oh. So, and it, it is, it's a group about like reading and words, mm -hmm. and of course she was talking about the evolution of women as objects turning to women as, you know, like People romanticizing are... women. Yeah. You know, like how poetry back in the day yeah. was all about comparing women to an object. Oh, yeah. Usually a flower, and it's uh -huh. like, a uh, rose by any other name, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Or comparing her to bad yeah. stuff. But of yeah. course, if you listen to William Shakespeare, he's he's very uh, truthful about this as well in the words. It's like he's very, he knows he objectifies the women in the, oh, yeah. in the words. And of course, the women in the, are very, very sharp, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good of course, you can check all that out. It's happening tomorrow night. There's the 14th Annual Central and Southwest Asia Conference. It's mm. number nine. Of course, we don't have any of these clips to show you. Um, we have the 2016 Peacemaker Award, uh, Distinguished Art Lecture featuring Holly Andres, and of course, uh, our monthly YW Talk. And you can check that out at MCAT.org by clicking on to one of the uh, 189 or 190 tabs and it brings you to our nice little nice little page and you get to see what's the most recent thing has been uploaded which is our show last Friday yep. and then you can see ASAF Cafe, Missoula Democrats Meeting, Seattle Death Trains by Gene Bernofsky. And if you guys want to watch us live all you have to do is scroll up to the top go to this green little button that says watch click on it and, and it will bring show you this us page. live. Yeah. And you just and press play. If we showed it right now, it'd probably show us like a, at a fairly large delay. As you can see, our image right there is up to date. And then we're right here. Oh my gosh! Yeah, mm -hmm. Meta. Yeah. Sweet man. But if you yeah. want to find us, you can log on to Wake Up Mozilla. As we've told you earlier. As we we'll told tell you, you again at the end of the show. We'll tell you Stay tuned again. for that. And of course, it is. Uh, we have <laughs> Tales from the Weekend later in this episode nice. as well. And before I move on to Noel's segment, I do want to show a clip from last week's um, Stop oh, Animation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is one of our more... Um, well, I, I like to compare this one. It, it is uh, as well done as it is, as it is violent. Yes. So um, I just want to show this off. Uh, and of course, there's a view discretion advised. And just so you guys know, this is one of our teenage boys made this video. Um, so it's got blood, it's got violence, of course, but it's done really, really well. Yes. Really well. And when we come back, we'll have your uh, Monday, and Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday event with Noel, and of course, Musical Notes with ASAP Adonai. <laughs> Say goodbye, fool. Oh, no! Huh? Hello, you guys. We are back. And yeah, that Play-Doh was all too real. It really was. But it was excellent. He did a great job. So I can only praise him for the great animation. He's also like a 13-year-old boy, so that kind of happens, you know. We don't want to appease on the creativity. Yeah, we don't. We don't. It was so good. Okay, you guys. So I've got events for you starting today. Uh, starting at 9 a.m., there's a preschool camp over at Roots Acre Sports Center. It's for ages 3 to 5. They can do a half day from 9 to noon, or else a full day from 9 to 3.30. Um, a walk-in rate is $90 for a half day, $185 for a full day. Space is not guaranteed, but they do take in walk-ins if you need a last-minute camp. Um, over at Taste Buds Kitchen, starting at 9 for ages 4 to 8, they also have a camp. It's called Create the Rainbow Cooking Camp. Um, and so each day is going to be a colorful culinary adventure. It'll be $195 per week or $45 just for that day. Kids Tables at the Missoula Public Library. This is, um, this is a week free weekday lunch program open to ages youth um, 18 and under. And so it's, you know, free lunch and then they usually do an art activity right after. So if the feeding begins at 1130 and then art is at noon. 
We've got a couple of our bridge group sessions. Bridge group is at the Missoula Senior Center at 1. This is for the beginners uh, brush up group. And then we've got a duplicate bridge over at the Garden City Duplicate Bridge Group. It's also starting at 1 o'clock. That's on Stockyard Road. Just go to MissoulaEvents.net and check out uh, the event page and you can find out their phone number and where they're located. They're still pretty vague to me. Uh, over at the Missoula Public Library, they've got computer electronics in their makerspace that starts at 3 o'clock. Uh, and you can uh, work on a project of your choice or learn how to use their equipment. And it goes until 6 o'clock. Wordplay is at the base at the Warehouse Mall. This is every Monday starting at 4 o'clock. It's poetic games, it's exploration, um, it's uh, free writing and word expansion. Over at the Top Out Lounge, they've got their live recorded shows of the Grateful Dead from the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s. It's a day of trivia, they have a happy hour, and all the Grateful Dead you can want. Open Mic Night is at Imagination Brewing Company at 6. Also at 6 is an intro to email class over the Missoula Public Library. So if you uh, know how to use your computer, know how to turn it on, but want to learn how to use some email, email your friends, uh, that's at 6 o'clock. We have a couple of book signings and readings. Our first one is at Fact and Fiction by Stephen Faulkner. He's reading and signing Bitterroot that starts at 7 o'clock. And then over at Shakespeare and Company is Shoba Rao. She is reading and signing from her new book of historical fiction, uh, An Unrestored Woman. There's a movie at the Roxy Theater at 7 p.m. It's called How to Let Go of the World. This is a movie about climate change. Um, and warriors are, commit, are who are committed to reversing the tide of global warming. It's supposed to be inspirational. Uh, and then our last event for Monday is a tango mini series of Mountain Dance Fest. This is going to be held at the University of Montana in their open space. Uh, it starts at 7:30, and you can pretty much just learn tango or in, you know enhance your tango skills, which sounds like it'd be pretty fun. But that's all I've got for you guys going on on Monday. We're switching gears now over to musical notes with Asaf Adonai. I'm going to do something a little different, out of order. First, in 1949, our guest appeared on a short-lived television anthology series. Your Showtime as Sherlock Holmes in the adaptation of The Adventures of the Speckled Band. And let's start with that clip. <laughs> as you can see... Um, the rest you will leave to me. What is that uh, rest, Mr. Holmes? I shall spend the night in the room where your sister died. Oh, how about me? There is a distinct element of danger. Huh, sounds all the more inviting. Uh, I was hoping you'd say that. Okay, sorry about that. I didn't realize the sound was on. Now, before I tell you who our guest is, I just wanted your audience to see this. Get a, a clip of this. This is a very short-lived um, television series back in 1949. Our guest on today's musical notes is not from our country, as you can see. He had never read comic books before being hired to play the character that he was asked to play. His agent called and said, you're going to be on this television series. And our guest said, huh? What series? The Batman series. Because our guest had never heard of Batman. So his agent says, don't you read the comics? And our guest says, no, never. His agent says, you're going to be the butler on the Batman series. And, the, and our guest says, how do you know I even want to be a butler? It's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Finally, his agent says it will pay you $100,000. And our guest says, I'm Batman's butler. And there he is. <laughs> our guest is Alan William Napier Clavering, known to the world as Alan Napier. Alan Napier was an English actor, as you can see. There he is there, and you can see from the Sherlock Holmes clip. Now, after a decade in West End theaters in his country, he had a long film career, first in Britain and then in Hollywood, but he'll always be remembered for playing Alfred, the faithful butler to Bruce Wayne and Batman in the 1960s Batman television series. Now, um, he's related to Britain's Prime Minister from 1937 to 1940, Neville Chamberlain. And he's, after um, graduating high school at the Clifton, I mean at the Parkwood Hall School, 
He graduated from the Clifton College, and then he studied at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Napier appeared for 10 years from 1929 to 39 in the Western stage, and then he made his American debut as the romantic lead opposite Gladys George in a movie called Lady in Waiting. And he appeared in such films as Random Harvest 1942, Cat People 1942, and then he also appeared in a movie called The Song of Bernadette in 1943 where he plays the ethically questionable psychiatrist who was hired to declare Bernadette mentally ill. And he plays this villain in Earl of Warlock, the um, Earl of Warlock in the Joan of Arc 1948 film. And so he's just done like all kinds of diverse films for that type acting, you know, for um, Western stage and character acting for English acting, but he was cast in 1965 to play Alfred of the Batman series, and of course that's when he hit his stride. And after that series was canceled in 1968, he, did, he went on to do some extended work into the 1980s, playing roles in the miniseries QB7. I don't know if you ever heard of that or not. And finally, he retired in 1981 at the age of 78. So it would be impossible to mention every film and movie he's ever done. This is just a brief flyover, but your audience can look him up, Alan Napier. We lost him when he was 85 back in 1988. Okay. So he left some interesting movies that you can check out. Nice. Thank you very much, Asa. Sure. sure. That was Musical Notes with Asa at night. Up next, we have an art clip featuring at the Museum Art Museum, it's Animophilia, and it's going to be lasting until this Saturday, so get there before it's too late. <laughs> guys we are back and I've got stuff going on for you on Tuesday so as always there's lots more happening on Tuesday than there is on Monday uh, so we start pretty early tomorrow morning at 7:30 for sunrise kundalini yoga at the barn movement studio um, drop-ins are welcome it's open to all levels and abilities um, and I do believe that it lasts through July so I think that there may be like two more weeks left and then it's done uh, over at the University of Montana, they've got their blood drive that starts at 10 a.m. It's from 10 to 3 in room 204 in the James E. Todd building. You can contact 327-2045 to sign up or use the code GOGRIZ on the Red Cross website. Walk-ins are also welcome. Uh, over at Frenchtown Pond State Park, they're having a Junior Ranger program. This will be located at the West Picnic Shelter. Um, and so this is a free event open to the public, for, uh, but it's for, for kids, kids aged 4 to 12 years old. Um, and so they're going to learn about the outdoors and just play around. That sounds great. Uh, Shrek is at the Roxy Theater at 11. Uh, if you guys don't remember Sh Shrek, it was that classic children's movie, so that's playing at the Roxy. Also at 11 is Kids Activities at the Historical Museum at Fort Missoula. Um, that'll be from 11 to 12 and 3 to 4. It's every single day, all summer long. 
At the Children's Museum of Missoula, they've got fizzy painting. It starts at 11. Also at 11, out in a French town state park, they've got their paddleboard lessons. That's from 11 to 12:30, and then 1 to 2:30. I um funny thing is is like I saw like some kind of a paddleboard competition um like downtown when I was wandering around the other yep. day. People were going from point A to point B and it was just like it was totally timed. It, it was really interesting. Yeah, sure. it, it was, was the Windmeyer Sup Cup. <laughs> Mm-hmm. It was it was really cool. A lot of people were intense, and then like I looked over and there's like m- a bunch of people just like oh, really? paddleboard and they're just like ah. crazy. Ah. It's like crazy. That's cool. Yeah, that was the Windmeyer Sub Cup. I don't know who won it, but it seems it's a fun event. Mm-hmm. It seems like it'd be cool. Uh, the guy with the paddleboard won. Oh yeah, him. He's great. He yeah, wins he's every amazing. year. Amazing. Yeah. Nice. Or she's amazing. She's amazing. Okay. <laughs> So, uh, we've got our kids' table at the Missoula Public Library. Feeding begins at 11.30 and there's an activity at noon, ages 18 and under. Um, over in the Alps boardroom at the Florence Building, they've got Shooting the Bull Toastmasters at noon. This is a lively Toastmasters club where it'll help you increase your confidence, increase your public speaking skills, um, and grow your vocabulary. <laughs> Over at the Missoula Public Library, they've got a children's summer activity program. It's called Safety First. It starts at 2 p.m. And these are, they're going to teach you ways to be safe in home and outside. Yoga Warriors is at the Learning Center at Red Willow. It starts at 4 o'clock. This is a specific yoga program designed for veterans and their caregivers to help with PTSD, anxiety, and sleeping problems. There is a Farmer Field Day. Uh, they're talking about seed saving. It starts at 5 p.m. It's at Good Egg Farm. Um, it's Good Egg Farm's number is 830-8218. They didn't have their address up. They said it would be provided. Um, and so they're going to cover seed saving advice, how to identify seed quality, and why to grow seeds for your own particular climate or growing space. They're also going to share a seed cleaning demonstration and showcase good egg seed stock for onions, parsnips, carrots, and more. That's pretty cool. Uh, over at Silver Lagoons at, McTor- at McCormick Park at 5 p.m. tomorrow, there's a family fishing derby. This is going to be, it's a child and family service network. It, prevents, it presents their first annual family fishing derby. It starts at 5. Um, yeah, so you can go there and it's free and open to public. Nice. Cool. We've got our Missoula Farmer's Market at the Red X's at 5.30 tomorrow. That only lasts until the end of the summer, so get on your Tuesday night market as quick as you can. And then we've got Fall from the Park that starts at 5.30. It goes till 7.30. They're going to be at Wapikaya Park. It's going to be at 134 Tahoe Road. It's obviously in Missoula. They also have yoga in the parks. This week is going to be held at Greeno Park that starts at 6 p.m. You know, I'm really glad that the Parks and Recreation are doing a lot more. Me too. Because I don't remember them doing as much as they did, did this year as they did last summer. Oh, yeah? Or maybe they just didn't mention on the MissoulaEvents.net. I just don't think that they mentioned it that much. Because yeah. I think that this has been like, maybe last year was like the first year that they started doing this. Yeah. Um, I think uh, with Missoula Parks and Recreation, they're just like, oh, we got the pools. So we're, we're covered. Yeah. Uh, they're just like, like, let's drill a hole, put some water in it, and just pool there. Pool, pool. Yeah, pool for stay everyone. Cool. You get a pool. Stay, you get stay a pool. cool in this water hole. Yeah, and then fish next to it. <laughs> yeah. Or in it as well. Or in it as well. Yeah, yeah. We but I fish. think it is too. I'm glad the Parks and Rec is getting engaged and uh, providing all these things for the community. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming there's probably a softball league, a junior softball league. I'm sure there is. There's so softball. many of them out there. Mm-hmm. People love their softball. It's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, people love softball. All right. Yeah. Okay, moving on. All right. So we've got our picking circle at the Top Hat Lounge at 6. This is for bluegrass oriented musicians to get down there and jam out. Uh, Over at the Public Library at 6 o'clock is our Community Creative Writing Workshop. This is a drop-in environment focused on the creative writing workshop process. That's from 6 to 7 in their makerspace. Over at Imagination Brewing Company is a women's self-defense seminar that's also at 6 o'clock. And so what it is, it's going to be um, empowering women to be aware and give basic effective tools to manage hostile encounters. Uh, It'll cover a variety of scenarios and teach how to get out of holds, basic strikes and kicks, and overall awareness to deter predators. Which honestly, as a woman, it's good to have these classes, but it also makes me really sad that we still have to have these classes. And as a man, I agree with what the woman says. Yeah. <laughs> it's too bad. You know, it's bad. It's sad that women have to feel uncomfortable while walking home at night. Yeah. 
It sucks, but I'm really glad that they're giving these self-defense classes, and I encourage mm -hmm. every woman to get out there and take control of your life. Or carry a big stick like the president said. Yeah, or carry a big stick. Or carry a shiv. Yeah, <laughs> something, something. But moving on again. Okay, so over at Peaceful Heart Yoga, we've got Intro to Yoga, Meditation, and Mindfulness class. It starts at 6.30. Um, and so it's for beginners and anyone wanting to take a deeper look into the full spectrum of yoga. Um, so that's 6.30 to 9. We held at Peaceful Heart Yoga, 725 West Alder Street. And, uh, number three is our suite. It'll be $30. And you can email jess2breathe at gmail.com. We've got a couple of dance classes. We've got our African dance class at the Missoula Senior Center at 7 o'clock. $10 for any class or $35 for four classes. Uh, you can also drop in. Drop-ins are welcome. And then we have Ula at the Barn Movement Studio at 7 o'clock. At the Roxy Theater, also at 7, is their National Theater Live. This is called The Audience. And so the National Theater Live Encore Series is bringing a selection of award-winning British theater productions to your local cinema, which is ours, the Roxy. Um, and so the audience is about Queen Elizabeth II, who has met with each of her 12 prime ministers in a private weekly meeting. The weekly meeting is known as the audience. Um, and so no one knows what they, they discuss, not even their spouses. So this is a movie about that. So that'll be cool. Um, okay, and then this is my last event, and this is a pretty good one. So it's called Skeptics in the Pub. Um, this is at the Iron Horse upstairs. It's called the 501 Lounge. And so what it is is for skeptics and people that have conspiracy theories or just, like, want to rant. Um, but they want people to, to pre-register. So this is where you can get a hold of them www.meetup.com slash Missoula Area Secular Society Member Organized Events. I wasn't able to say all that, so I just made it big for you guys. But if you want to go be a skeptic, you guys can go there and register and meet them. So that's going to be tomorrow at 7, 501 Lounge, Iron Horse, upstairs. Yeah. Um, but that's what I've got going on for you guys today and tomorrow. As always, check out MissoulaEvents.net. University of Montana website, the Missoulian and the Independent for more events in your community. Yep. But now we're switching gears. Yes, we're going over to yes, Scott. Yes, you yes. got Tales from the Weekend. Tales from the Weekend. And so here. these and are always nice little tales that have a moral ending. Yep. And I love them. They are, this one, you are in for uh, a, a different kind of spin of Tales from the Weekend. Well, I can't wait. Take and, away, Scott. Uh, here is Tales from the Weekend. Hi, everybody. Uh, I started doing this segment a couple of weeks ago. You know, it, it gives me a chance to um, release some of my creative juices Juices, because I just come <laughs> up with these ideas randomly and I never really write them down. So uh, this is my chance to actually share my ideas in story format. Um, but usually the um, idea of these stories come from inanimate objects who have personalities. So without further ado, here is Tales from the Weekend. Hank the Helmet is a strong, thick-headed helmet who's about to get a wake-up call of his life. <laughs> the day began like any other. Roger, the man who'd wear Hank upon his head, would fashion Hank the Helmet every time he went out biking. But for Roger, this would be the last time he wore old Hank. The wind would whip through the holes of the helmet, meant to circulate air coming through. Many times Roger's Roger would get a sunburns across his bald and shaved head in a parallel lines. Roger was always careful to mind the rules of the road, even slowing down when he found himself in the blind spot of a vehicle. On the other side of town, a big rig, hauling the latest brew to be delivered to many stores, is about to cross paths with Roger and Hank the Helmet. Hank has always been there for Roger, and that he is the only one only protection from any brain trauma that Roger could easily endure, especially that one time Roger decided to go mountain biking in Utah, <laughs> where the mountains were high and the valleys were very low than expected. But unlike the tough and barren landscape that is predictable, the city is a jungle on its own. With the vehicles going up and down the street, it's mind-boggling that anyone would be able to navigate this metal and concrete jungle. Hank has been hit by grounds of grass and grounds of concrete. Um, whether it be high or low, Hank was there to make sure Roger never left any marbles he brought with him. As Roger began to pick up more and more speed on the downhill that caused more than one incident of Hank's expertise, Roger found himself 
on the collision course with the big rig and its massive load. Hank knew this could mean trouble for Roger, and, Ro and Roger was unable to slow down enough to lower the effects of this upcoming crash. Hank saw the opening on the outer side of the big rig and began to tug at Roger. As Roger began to lean more and more towards the opening between the stop sign of the intersection and the rear end of the truck, Hank was worried he'd hit the curb, which would catapult Roger right from out of his bike. Roger nearly slipped by the rig, but before Roger could sigh, a car coming from behind the big rig hit Roger so hard that Hank the helmet fell right off. Roger is killed instantly, and the only thing that was left unscathed was Hank. Of course, the moral of the story would be, it's better to be safe than sorry. But unfortunately, it's when you gotta go, you gotta go. Oh my god, Scott, that's so morbid! That was nice, I like that, thank you! <laughs> okay, okay. You can practice all the safety you want, but when you gotta go, you gotta go. It's true, that was really funny. Yep. Yeah. Like, uh, it, you can't escape death. Well, like, the idea is, like, um, like when you're riding a bike and you see someone on the road, uh, cars are usually kind of go around them. But a lot of times, when um, bikers wear helmets, cars are a little more inclined to drive closer to the oh, bikers. Oh, I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, they're, they're wearing like, a oh, helmet. They're, they're covered. Yeah, they're safe. Yeah. yeah. It's not true. Yeah. This, this is a little known uh, effect. Nice. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that was very nice. Yes, That's good. but... Uh, Even though with the, but, you know, you can't have happy endings all the time. No. Good. And I thought this was this really just came to me last week. I was like, oh, I should do this. Yeah. You know, yeah. Gotta do something a little morbid it's once okay. in a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Scott. Mm -hmm. Everyone, that was Tales from the Weekend. But, I mean, I that's all I've got for you guys. Yeah, that's all i got for you guys. Yeah. Um, of course, you can find out more information about our morning show and uh, clips from our summer camps uh, at wakeupmissoula.wix.com slash wakeupmissoula. Um, you can go to videos and you can watch the latest of MCAT summer camps um, videos. Of course, it used to be Flagship Fridays, but it is the summer, so it's mm -hmm. all devoted to summer camp movies. You could like us on Facebook. We post everything that we do and everything that we show. Um, we also tweet it. Yep. at Wake Up Missoula. Missoula Community Access Television has a Twitter. You can uh, check us out at MCAT TV Missoula. You can like us on Facebook and to find out more information about us just go to MCAT.org. And of course there is a city council meeting tonight starting at 7 and of course if you don't have it um, you should like us on Facebook because we stream uh, we stream live from our Facebook page and of course we'll also be streaming it on MCAT.org so it'll be, it's a great chance for you guys to uh, get involved more with your city government uh, even though it's going to be a short meeting I looked at their agenda it's like pfft, there's like two items they're talking about yeah, the that's kind of nice though sometimes the, city uh, council is super long and then other times it's really short and it's always kind of nice when it's short. yeah the demolition I, I just uh, reviewed the uh, last week's demolition um, of the mercantile of uh, policy, mm -hmm. blah, 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 they're talking about it. Um, there was a four-hour meeting. It was wow. land use and planning, a four-hour meeting, and of course they, 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 you know, you said that they voted in favor of it, of course, but the, one of the big things that they want to take away from this land use and planning is to get the guy uh, from um, Bozeman, the guy, uh -huh. the architect who's Homework. designing it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think his name is Andy Holleran. Andy Holleran. He doesn't go by Andrew. He goes by Andy. He, he made it a point of that. I'm Andy. <laughs> but Andy Holleran is from home base. Okay. And they're the ones who are making um, yep. the building. And they, um, a lot of people are saying, it's like, uh, okay, if we're going to tear down this building, you should at least keep the facade. Yeah. Like I said, the facade is a big yep. word that yeah. everyone's been using. So he's the guy who's kind of um, architecture, doing all these designs and stuff like that. Most people just don't like the way it was because it's just a, a hotel Marriott. Yeah. It's like complete replacement of a whole building. Yep. But, but we'll see how it works because there's going to be a uh, more land use and planning committee um, coming up on Wednesday. So if you want um, input and you want to do a public comment, you can show up to the Land Use and Planning, which I believe is sometime in the afternoon on Wednesday, this Wednesday. Yeah. And I'll talk a little bit more about it on Wednesday. Hopefully I'll, I'll be able to do some city council, but of course this is the beginning of our summer camp, our second um, animation um, summer camp week, of course. Um, last week was our first animation, stop animation um, camp. This is our second part. This is usually for... Uh, 
this one is the one of our more popular ones, and it overfills, so we have a spill. So this is our spill level of um, kids. And of course, I recognize a lot of the kids' names from my after-school flagship program, so I'm excited to see a lot of, see how my kids have been doing the last couple, I haven't seen them in the couple last couple months. months. Yeah. But nice. I'm excited, it'll be good. It, <laughs> Me too. And uh, MCAT will be closed from one to five, and if you're interested in coming down to MCAT and producing or being a part of us, you can call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542. MCAT. You can email us mcat at mcat.org but of course our public hours are from 5 to 8 Tuesday through Thursday this week and next week yep and um, for Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ram <laughs> and for Wake Up Missoula my name is Noel McAvoy here's ASAP Adonai we will see you all on Wednesday <laughs>